My name's Mikey Rockwell, and I'm on a quest to make games. Games. In this episode of DevQuest, I pull up an old prototype and recreate it in three different game engines. Will this be a huge waste of time, or will I actually learn something? So a quick recap on the overall project. The goal was to make a bunch of prototypes and then from them select the idea I liked the most or I thought had the best chance of becoming a good game. That and, you know, trying out different technologies, different game engines and trying to find the right fit for the next game as well. After around six weeks of prototyping, we had a turn-based survivor's prototype, a nature wizard forest guardian game, a cat herding adventure, and a Peter Piper rat catching simulator if you want to include our game jam game. Rat game, cat game, tree game, but what we really needed was a space game. Space game, space game. At this point, I remembered that I'd started a project about a year ago, something that I was really excited about, but couldn't follow through with due to work commitments. And I thought, well, maybe I could dig it up and add it as a prototype to what we had going on with these other games. The idea for Space Game was to create an action RPG roguelike adventure. But instead of dungeons and monsters, you'd be in the vast expanse of space, fighting lots of different enemies and collecting loot to upgrade your ship. I started tinkering with this idea in mid-2023, and at the time, the only thing I knew how to use was Unity. Unity, 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 Unity. I had a few key design ideas, and the first was going to be procedural generation for the world. Roguelikes often generate their world in rooms or in dungeons. How is this going to work out in space? space, space. My next brilliant idea was to have enemies that could navigate around the world to find you. They could chase you, but they could also avoid obstacles and one another to create more dynamic combat. The original old school roguelikes could create these vast games with hundreds of monsters, just using ASCII characters and different colors. I wanted there to be huge variety in the game, but I realized that everything was gonna need art, so that was gonna be a challenge. The other problem was that at this point, I really wasn't very good at programming, and a lot of this stuff was outside of my scope. It was around this time I first got my hands on GitHub Copilot, the AI programming assistant, which would hopefully at least get me started on some of these ideas I wasn't familiar with. We got this basic flocking movement system going, which was pretty janky, but at least it worked. The next thing was to try some procedural generation by basically scattering a whole bunch of asteroids around this huge world, and then chopping the world up into grid squares and turning things on and off as you got closer and further away from them. For the artwork, I was experimenting with a piece of software called Pixel Composer. I'd seen the developer do a demo where he had scattered some shapes and mirrored them to create a whole bunch of different spaceships in one go. I saw some potential in this and made a janky spaceship generator that I could use to pump out a whole bunch of different prototype artwork. So after a few weeks of messing around with this project, I had basically made asteroids. Okay, I needed a lot of work. But at this point, I was working on a mobile game with a client and I really had to give that my full attention. So I put down Space Game for the time being. I didn't know it then, but this would be the last time I worked on this particular project. Breakdown. I'd been working with Unity for a couple of years and it was hard not to peek over the fence sometimes at other options like Unreal Engine, which had always been pushing the boundaries of rendering and technology in general. I had tinkered with the engine in the past and not gotten very far. But now with a bit more experience under my belt, maybe I could go back in with the space game idea and try and make a prototype. At least see how far I could get using Unreal Engine. But this time I was gonna try a 3D version. Unreal's rendering is second to none and it just looked great straight out of the box. Things got off to a pretty good start. I was using Unreal's blueprint system to write scripts using nodes instead of code. Sometimes though, I did wish I could just write a line of code instead of connecting all these different nodes up. So when it came time to try and recreate my procedural generation of spawning asteroids and groups, I opted to try writing C++ code. And to be honest, I had very little knowledge of C++ at the time. So once again, I was relying heavily on GitHub Copilot to help me, 
but I did manage to get a basic spawning algorithm going and get this little ship flying around along with some trails and VFX and little lasers that you could shoot and impact the asteroids. This was all well and good and the 3D looked really cool with the sense of scale and space but when it came time to do something a little more tricky like creating enemies with navigation systems I was getting lost in the weeds of Unreal's AI systems and not really understanding how things worked and after a few frustrating days of not making much progress and not really seeing a way forward I decided to call it there and go back to something a bit more familiar in Unity. I'd never used Unity for a 3D project, but I thought why not give it a shot now while I'm playing around with this stuff. And while it definitely doesn't quite look as good as Unreal, I was still able to get something up and running without too much trouble. One big advantage of Unity is the asset store, and I had found an asset called Agents Navigation that was purpose built for this kind of 2D navigation that I was trying to use in my game. And it was really simple to just put it into the game and get enemies that would path around asteroids and do all this fancy stuff straight out of the box. I hadn't been working very long on this prototype when again I had to jump onto the mobile game and this time get it ready for shipping, which was a major mission. By this point it was the end of the year and we were packing down our studio and our house to move to another country, so without knowing it I was laying another space game prototype to rest. And so we fast forward to the end of Ludum Dare and I suddenly remember the space game prototype. We had been primarily using Unity for new game ideas, but I had tried out Godot with the cat game, and I thought why not try Godot for the space game, maybe go back to 2D to make things simple, and just give it another go. And unfortunately I found this process very difficult, I struggled with some of the most basic things like adding parallax to the background or rendering trails. These simple things that I could do really quickly in Unity were taking me hours if not days to just get working in Godot. It was definitely a me problem and I was expecting things to move as quickly as they did in Unity, a uh, piece of software that I'd been using for two years already. You're propelled along by the progress and when you can't make progress, we feel like the progress is so slow, that's when you start to lose heart. And that's how I feel with Godot. Combining my lack of programming knowledge with my lack of Godot knowledge made for a pretty painful experience and I wasn't making much progress and I was getting kind of defeated. Oh, dude. Let me just, let me just pull up Unity. <laughs> let me just open Unity. Let me just save myself from this pain. At this point I thought enough experimenting with engines I don't understand, I'm just going to go into Unity and quickly bash out a prototype to figure out if this is a game worth making or not. Being the fifth time that I had done this I was able to get something up and running really quickly. I got agents navigation back in the game and had little ships that could fly around the world, avoiding the asteroids and firing on the player when they got close. However when I started to work on some procedural generation spawning asteroids, I started having trouble talking to the agent's navigation system about the asteroids as obstacles and how big they were. What seemed like a really simple idea, just setting the size of the agent in the agent's navigation, was something that I just couldn't figure out. I was really starting to feel detached from the systems that were in my game. And Unity itself is a black box, you cannot see what's going on inside and you can't change things. Working from such a high level is very convenient, yet you don't have any control over the inner workings of your game. I understand that this is probably a design problem. This game maybe isn't as straightforward as I thought, and maybe it's not even worth making. Regardless, something happened at this point that got me really thinking about what's going on under the hood. I left this prototype here, and not only that, but I left Unity here too. And since then, I haven't gone back and made a project in Unity since. After giving up on the Unity prototype, I was lost in space, not really knowing what to do next. If Unity was no longer an option due to it being too high level and a closed ecosystem, maybe I should try harder with Godot, which is open source and editable if you want to make changes to the engine. Not that I'd know how to do that. So I spent a bit more time getting my toolchain set up and understanding the workflow a bit better and started making a little more progress. 
I got some enemy ships that would fly around, kind of navigating correctly, using some of Godot's experimental features. I got some extra weapons going with raycast laser beams and torpedoes that would track their targets. I even started messing around with the UI systems and making sense of them. It really started to feel like Godot could be a new home for me. However, as I proceeded with this prototype, I again began to struggle with what comes next in this game. I had clearly lost my way from the prototyping process. But instead of giving up on this cursed space game idea, I started to think for the first time about custom solutions. In the next episode of DevQuest, I leave game engines behind and attempt to make my own custom engine using low-level tools. This is not going to be easy. Let me just open Unity. Let me just save myself from this pain. <laughs>